Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Actually, hit pause right here. This is going to be a oh, jump the gun there. And I'm like, okay, round of eight over. Vile Tomato won that match. This is best of three. Vile Tomato needs to win at least another match uh, to close this one out. I hope it goes a little bit. I'm going to be honest. Felt like that game was won for a large portion of things. And I'm hoping the uh, goes a little bit faster this time. Mostly because there was a long period of time where character R was holding on. Vile Tomato just needed to spend some money to cap it out. I gotta say, these matches are hilarious in the meantime. And me calling the round of eight, I'm, I will admit, I'm doing so for Thanksgiving. If you guys don't know what meat is, by the way, I highly recommend going out and finding a local meadery, if you can find one, and purchasing some meat for yourself and just try it out. It is delicious. I had some Thanksgiving meat. I'm finishing that out in the background because honestly, these matches and these days, they call for a drinking. Uh, chat asking if I'm going to stream the intervention. I I don't know if this is the intervention or not. Who knows? Anyway, I don't do that. Whatever. I can stop whenever I want. I say taking another uh, guzzle on stream. I don't know if this counts as PG. Do you have to be over 20? No, whatever. Depictions. I should now put like the PG-13 thing up somewhere on this where it has depictions of alcohol from the caster <laughs> in the game. Vile Tomato. Looks like he's actually opening up 12th hatch, which I'm glad to see. Hopefully he... Did he skip Overlord? Yes, he did skip Overlord, which I'm also happy to see. Trying to hunt down additional bases. I think he's got a jump, it looks like, on Character R. Character R going for a front door seal. I'm not sure how much a front door seal like this makes sense on a map where Infested Terrans are in play, because it just feels like you're just bunching up your buildings to lose more, uh, more immediately, more rapidly. Vile Tomato going ahead and grabbing his Extractor, also keeping that... I like that he kind of moved the Infested Command Center to create uh, some semblance of a wall. Let's see if he... I'm not sure these players also know the maps all that well, because I think otherwise both of them would be making a beeline uh, for the center. And I'm almost wondering, once we see the round of four, once we see the finals in these matchups, if we're going to see more of a push towards that. Spawning Pool being built, no gas being minded, being minded, being mined yet for Vile Tomato first marine being produced but it looked like so i think the magic number don't quote me on this we'll have to see as time progresses but i think the magic number of marines might be eight might be eight this overlord might be uh speaking of getting eaten eight bad pun uh this overlord might be eating some bullets very very shortly if this marine decides to scoot out of position to go ahead and take it out a quick factory so we're seeing some version of a one 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 for character R. So I'm wondering if he's just going to try to play this heads up, but with Infested Terran underneath it? Kind of uh, interesting play. Where? That Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out. Maybe if he can get some vultures, get some mines down. Mines could be very interesting as a defensive measure. Creep Colony already plopping down upon, I think that a, a large portion of that was scouted. This command center being grabbed in the bottom right hand corner. Overlords making their way across. It looks like this Overlord for character R got a good look at the main. Saw the, sp uh, the sorry, they saw the uh, spore colony. Saw the spawning pool. Sees the gas being mined, and it's going to go ahead and just pull out. The Marine did walk up. It looks like it was trying to find that Overlord. Didn't get a lot of damage done there. Got zero damage done, in fact, and it's going to go ahead and back off. A couple handful of Marines at the natural expansion. It looks like the factory going to remain silent for the time being. And is he just going to... So, has a starport, getting a machine shop, and is he just going to go for some sort of quick rush? Interesting. I'm inter So, not going to work against Vile Tomato, because Vile Tomato is certainly playing uh, old-school ladder style, and getting three creep colonies uh, that he can turn into Sunkens very, very rapidly, so going uh, a very defensive stand. So, playing uh, kind of, I will turn him my way in, and then be in a position to attack you down the line. These infested Terrans to the north certainly going to be scouted right off the bat. Actually, early siege tanks could be interesting. If you can get enough, I wonder what the siege tank number is to be in a defensive spot. So I'm wondering if Character R's plan here is I'll get siege tanks, the siege tanks and the marines will defend my front, I'll get a dropship, and then I'll just move the dropship into my opponent's base over... I will fly over Mordor's defense... Or, uh, is Mordor right? Yeah, Mordor's defenses over the sunken colonies and play the game from there. It looks like some a handful of Zerglings being produced in this back corner. There is a growing army of infested Terrans marching there. This Overlord should be able to capture the center command center and 
probably cycle up, which is again going to save Vile Tomato Overlords that he needs to produce. And I feel I feel like that's going to be yes, efficient numbers. And I think I called this right: a dropship in production, siege tech being produced to help defend the front, and so it's just going to be a air raid, air raid barrage. Actually, I, do I get to name this? I'm going to call it air raid strategy. So yeah, this is air, this is the air raid opener for uh, infested maps since we are now able to establish metas and name them. That's right, if you commentate these, so this is, I guess, encouragement for other high-level commentators out there. You get to name the strategies, even. Uh, this Marine, a little bit out of position to provide support. Siege Tech is going to finish up, looks like, and this dropship making a beeline. That Overlord sees it. There's only two Zerglings to try to defend things otherwise. Looks like their Ventral Sacks being upgraded as well to do drops on the other side of the map, but character are gonna get some free, some free hits regardless, it looks like. I like the strategy. The drones fleeing for their lives, but in doing so, they're bunching up. Looks like he's just gonna hit that lair initially with that first infested Terran. Is he just gonna go for two shots on the lair? Nope. This one's gonna try to do some damage. Oh, now let's see. Yeah, I don't like the something colony defense unless you just go all in on that because one infested Terran kills one something colony and that's just, just, I mean, it worked out here, because I think that was worth the price, but I think overall, uh, I don't think it plays out. Anyway, Overlord scooping up these infested Terrans, the dropship making its way back to the main, another barracks and another command center being built, so Character R definitely thinking about going down to the low ground. Is he going to scoop up additional infested Terrans and march out? Because it doesn't look like Val Tomato has any recourse. A second dropship being built. What is he going to fill that with? But it might just in time see... Nope. Is he going to respond? Oh, they're too grouped up, though. Okay, they're splitting up in two groups now. Let's see if they get a good spread. It looks like all of them die on top of each other. One remaining. Unfortunately, okay, able to kill some SCVs, but not getting a an immense amount of damage done there. So the execution... <laughs> literally. The uh, explosion? What should I call that? Execution sounds right. The execution of these infested Terrans exploding in the main. Not exactly there this time. Uh, so we'll see, uh, I don't know, we'll see how it goes uh, as things progress. Another hatchery being placed in the main. Some drones are in fact exposed. Looks like they are going to get a lot of drone kills. So nice drop. Looks like it's going to go ahead. They're going to move to the natural expansion. Some infested Terrans trying to provide some defense and they're so piled up. That is a huge economic hit for Vile Tomato. And Vile Tomato, is he going to just... Looks like he's just going to try to macro up behind this. He's got an additional hatchery planted. He's captured a lot of these infested command centers out in the field. I think he wants this hatchery to the corner to provide scouting. But, oh, there was an opportunity to go ahead and capture this. But it looks like it's going to be uh, just ignored. Character R going ahead and grabbing his natural expansion. So he's going to take what I'm going to call a economic lead as soon as he can get that saturated. I think with that economic damage he did with those last two drops... Uh, that was, in fact, sufficient as far as a follow-up. And it looks like he's waiting. So in, these siege tanks could be the factor that wins character R the game. So just because it's a larger macro-oriented map, that he can get these, he can just get these siege tanks up. Uh, granted, the drop Overlord, particularly with Overlord speed down the line, might be able to negate that. But as things stand, Vile Tomato, a bit confuzzled. He's got a creep colony back here. Maybe he's going to turn that into a spore colony. I don't know that that's, uh, again, going to be sufficient to provide the defense he really needs. And it looks like, okay, so he's going to throw in a fake dropship with a marine to the north to try to distract and try to force the... I think what he wants is he wants the drones to evacuate. Never mind, he's just going to drop that marine short. But I think what he's hoping is to get a drone evacuation to the natural expansion. Unfortunately, that's not happening. And a spore, colon a spore colony is going to morph... There, it's getting flown right over in the meantime. And actually, I feel like dropping right there and taking out those three would have been. But most of the drones are, in fact, here. But, wow. Okay, getting a nice explosion. I wish we could get, like, a kill count. If I had... Okay, so if I was a wealthier person and could invest and be like, okay, person who's out there to add graphics and things, I would totally add a kill count as far as what the infested Terrans are killing on either side. But I have neither the time nor the resources to make that happen. So, so YouTube and Twitch out there, I need you guys to pretend. I need you to visualize that in your brain and make that happen. 
Two siege tanks now with some SCVs alongside and a bunch of Marines out in front. This Overlord is alongside, again, still waiting for Overlord speed, a second support colony being produced. But without that, without on the wall, honestly, I feel like the infested, the counter infested, so okay, counterattack. So Vile Tomato definitely playing this um, old school, almost Terran style, where he's very much shelling inside of his base, daring character R to come and attack him. And character R has already gotten a science facility and he's getting science vessels. I'm kind of curious what that play is. Does the MP kill Infested Terrans? I do not believe it does, but maybe he's going to go for the Eraser trick? I'm not sure. Oh, Defense Matrix. He wants to drop Defense Matrix on everything to allow the Infested Terrans to to get through unimpeded. Another dropship moving away. There's only a single Spore Colony here, and here's the thing. The dropship can get on top of that Spore Colony, drop an Infested Terran, and I think that wipes it out in one hit because of the 500 damage. So I'm not sure how sufficient a defense that is. Vile Tomato going ahead and moving out with everything out here, but also Character R has a sufficient enough army with the supply where, despite the amount of Infested Terrans I'm seeing here on the ground, he might actually just be able to march out. Vile Tomato has grabbed that bottom right-hand base. Three Infested Terrans making their way to the Natural. It looks like they're thinking twice about it. They're going to swing back around, do a bit of scouting information. Are they going to check bottom right? This is sufficient to go ahead and clear this hatchery out. Missed an explosion someplace. Looks like that was a Zergling just getting splatted. That Marine taking damage. Character R is... Okay, so there's one dropped. Is he going to drop the other two? Okay, yeah. Now he's doing it better. And unfortunately, because of the health gain, and because it was a little bit out of position with the splash, that, with the splash, that hatchery, with just eight health left, but just needs to get tapped by something. A Marine could scoop up here and finish that out. Vile Tomato, again, kind of sitting in his base... Trying to play uh, turret defense, it looks like, primarily. I guess in this instance, it's uh, infested turret defense. But fool, you cannot defend. Cannot defend against this. Science vessels. Actually, I'm trying to think about late game Protoss tactics. Recall with infested Terran. How insane would that be? You could just completely obliterate a base. Yikes. Third command center being built. Some factories being plopped on. We do have double engineering bays as well. Siege tanks on the high ground. On top of everything else. Um, some Zerglings trying to run that bottom right corner. It looks like I missed a single Marine, a single damaged Marine. So this was like the, uh, what do I want to say? This was the Bruce Willis of the Marine from Die Hard. It's like damaged, but able to get there. But unfortunately, he left some larva. So Vile Tomato, as soon as he has 300 resources, should be able to plant that right back down without too much trouble. He has made a glut a absolute huge amount of infested Terrans. I assume? I'm not sure what that's eventually going to counter. A Marine sacrificing itself. That I, I don't know what to call that. Just a single Marine walking its way out. Just happy to die for the cause. Range finally being upgraded. after. So, range after Science Vessel. Siege Shank cleaning that up. Avenging his brethren. And another SCV stuck behind these lines. So this is actually a sufficient attack force between uh, everything that's out here. But this is this is the fear. Now we have a bunch of infested Terrans that have been scooped up into Overlords. So we're going to have... Kind of, we'll see if the Sirens wail. And I don't see any missile turrets or anything. Maybe if he just goes straight over these Marines, he will die. But it looks like he is going to take the, secur the Securitus. Securitus. I'm not saying that right. Whatever. He's taking a route which will uh, be sufficient. You don't even need to drop them off. It looks like he's going to drop them off. You can just wander these up and plop them. But let's see if the execution's there as well. So Command Center gets lifted off in time. And actually a lot of these Infested Terrans blowing up on themselves once again. So resources lost. Still three there. Two more hits. Three more hits it looks like to get it done. And again, the Infested Terran blowing up its own allies. And just for good measure, Marine killing one of his own allies as well as a sacrifice to the gods. Pouring blood on the ground. The Overlords retreating back to base. So a lot of resources, I'm going to say, squandered there by Vile Tomato. He's got three Infested Command Centers just pumping in the meantime. He's going to go ahead and try to equalize things by double expanding in the bottom right. But Character R continuing to macro up. He has double the supply. And with only something colonies and not enough infested Terrans and not a lot else 
uh, to defend things on the map and also grabbing his third. I'm going to put him in a commanding position. I almost feel like he could just scoop up, walk out, and kill uh, everything that's left out there. In fact, he could just go for a drop. He could just go for a short drop, drop things off here, start cleaning things off. Maybe that would be sufficient. However, I will say this for Vile Tomato. He's got a pretty strong economy, and he is producing Infested Terrans at an extremely rapid rate. Scooping up once again. Let's see if uh, if he can get it done. I'm wondering if he's going to go for the natural expansion this time. Unfortunately, it looks like an... Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which side you're rooting for, Vile Tomato going to, at least taking the southern route, is not going to have a lot of SCVs to explode on, it looks like here. And this is character R unseaging and starting to move forward now across the map. So maybe these overlords will be able to be sufficient warning. Maybe they can drop off short. And I think they would die before they would get close. Uh, I'm not sure. But additional something colonies being plopped down. I don't know if that's going to buy enough time. And I don't think this is a killing blow for Vile Tomato behind all this. So, Siege Tanks grouping up short. I believe this is enough Marines where they might be able to, and without the burrow this time, they might be able to just kill every infested Terran that's making its way across the north. The drop's happening, this time happening one at a time, which makes them so much more efficient. And as I say that, it looks like they still weren't able to take that command center down, but able to wipe out all resources there. One irradiate, just irradiate's being dropped. Walking in, dropping in irradiate, killing an infested Terran, walking back out. That is one efficient irradiate, I gotta say. This being pulled out, so a lot of damage done to that command center. It looks like that is burning. But again, not a lot of SCVs were fielded there. I take that back. Maybe Character R had a lot of SCVs there, because all of a sudden he's down to 28 SCVs. The Siege Tank's slowly moving forward. They're going to go ahead and siege their... It's kind of this... This is the true... I I think this map is called August Grad. And it really does feel like a, it's turned into a slow siege at this stage of things. Where you've got... I guess in this, I'm not sure who, what side to call what in this instant. But uh, Vile Tomatoes front door, bit by bit, getting whittled down. And I think that's going to be it for Vile Tomato. I'm wondering if he's going to hold this off and go for a big drop or if he's going to call GG. An Overlord looking to do some counter drops and the Marine's going to be able to wipe it out rapidly. Yeah, take it out before even a single, even a single unit was dropped and wiped out. Some overlords trying to make their way in from the rear. Maybe as a distraction tactic. It looks like they're going to go ahead and get wiped out overhead. More overlords being fielded up. Maybe with more overlords or maybe with a faker in the lead. Faker being like a fake overlord that doesn't actually have anything in it. Not the, the legendary League of Legends player faker in this instance. Maybe from a different angle can make it happen too. Because is this is a tightly packed grouping. But... Character R being unrelenting, actually moving forward with a dropship with uh, some SCVs and medics and marines, it looks like, for reinforcements and moral support as well. Zergling's running up, getting wiped out pretty rapidly. Now, yeah, this is it. Is this going to be sufficient? A bunch of irradiates dropping. But do they catch... Not able to catch the one, and it looks like... Some infested Terrans do, in fact, land, but it is not enough. Now, the base is still up in the bottom right, but it looks like Vile Tomato is going to call GG there with character R barreling down. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Going to move on to the third match between these two in the round of eight. Thanks for listening.